Wish I didn't have to be here. This is the, the speech every year that I most dread making, frankly, because the number of deaths every year just keeps going up and up and up. Every month we seem to break a record in this province and there seems to be no end in sight for this. We've seen, what is it, 1,455 people have died in our province in the first seven months of this year. And that's despite all the work that many people in here are trying to do to prevent that happening. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, government representative here and the government here have done a lot to try and uh, save folks' lives and prevent overdoses. I know many people here are working in this field, do that every day. We have colleagues at uh, our place who uh, uh, do uh, overdose prevention work and, uh, and administer naloxone every day to reverse overdoses. So there are so many people working so hard to stop this crisis, to stop these deaths, and yet they just keep coming. And you know, we've lost dozens of people from this community alone. And you know, behind me, you can see their faces uh, today. So I, I really don't like to have to come here every year and talk about this. And I wish I didn't have to. But we do, because for a few reasons in my mind. One is that I think the deaths often go unnoticed in our province and not just unnoticed but it seems me to me that there are people who actually don't care and uh, are not concerned by the amount of people who die every day and uh, indeed there are even some who think that they deserve it and that's a terrible thing and that's why we have to come every year to memorialize the folk that have died and hopefully remind people that we have a, an epidemic, a crisis still in our midst. And we remember folk with their pictures, but also we have the banner which we put up since last year, which is there every day, reminding folk who drive past and who walk past that we lose people every day and that they are loved. We also not just lost people who were dear to us at our place and this wide, the community that's here, but every single one of these folk was known to people outside of this community. They had family, they had friends. Just today, in the few minutes I've been here, two people have seen people on there who they knew from their past uh, who have died and they didn't realize they died. So these deaths are not just a loss of those folk, but they're a loss for this community. And they're a loss for families and couples and uh, children and fathers and mothers throughout BC. And therefore we must always remember their passing and not let it go unnoticed and unconcerned about. I also just want to finish by giving thanks for the lives of all of the folk you see behind. And this is not all the people who've died, there's others, but their pictures are not there. But I want to give thanks for the gifts they brought into our lives in different ways. The love they brought, look at the pictures, you know. You can see such warmth and love in those photos. To thank them and, you know, honor the love they brought, the gifts they brought, and remember that about them and give thanks that they came among us, that they were among us, some of them all too briefly, but to give thanks for their lives and honor them and not stigmatize them and uh, not to forget them. And I hope and pray that well, a day will come when we won't have to have today. We won't have to have these speeches. We won't have to have these boards because we will finally one day, I hope and pray, have ended this crisis and stopped the deaths. 
and I, I, I do earnestly pray for that and hope that will come. But meantime, we must never forget the people who've passed and we must never, I think, stop fighting uh, to try and stop the deaths to the ones that sadly are likely to happen in the coming days. We must do everything we can to stop it. And, uh, and thank you to everyone here who uh, works tirelessly to, to stop the deaths. And uh, I, I, I thank you for that and I honor you for that. Thank, thank you. you to all of you for being here today. Um, I am grateful to be here on the homelands of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. And I want to thank Bear for opening this event up in a good way. Uh, yeah, I, I have to extend a huge thanks to Julian and the entire Our Place team for their compassionate leadership in this movement and to all of you who you know, are on the ground, who have friends, who are supporting people, trying to save lives and stigma and really provide the resources that our community needs. Today we are gathered to mourn the loss, to grieve together. And as we look at each of these photos and we think of the people, I think everyone knows someone has lost someone. I think about the long life they should have lived and the spark in their eye the hole that they've left in their family and friends. And it is heartbreaking to think about the thousands of lives that have been cut short because we have failed to tackle the toxic drug crisis. And so all levels of government need to step up because right now we're failing. It means that we need to support the teams on the ground who are providing safe supply and the life-saving harm reduction services. I also want to just extend my thanks to harm reduction advocates like the SAFER initiative. You know, when I hear stories from people who are living on the streets, from people who are working, uh, providing these services, the common thread that I hear is a call to action. And that is for long-term funding, for long-term programs that are no barrier, that actually will provide the support that people need. And so I will continue to push, to fight, to ensure that we have evidence-based policies that save lives. And I just, I wanna say thank you all for being here today to mark this moment. And I wanna end just by returning to the wall of faces and yeah, the, the grief that we hold and let that grief really push us all into action. Thank you. Whoa.